Hello and welcome to another episode of A Brother's Creed Podcast. We talk about motivation, experiences, and we explore the world around us. We're the Thomas Brothers. I'm Ethan. And I'm Jared. And today we're talking about another one of our credos. So uh, one of these attributes that you can add to your personal creed. That list that you're building in your mind or on paper, hopefully, that lists out the things that you value and the, the rules that you live by. This one today we're talking about is optimism. What a time to be alive right now, right? Oh my gosh. It seems like the world is literally falling apart. I'm just like, is a zombie apocalypse going to happen or not? Because that'd be great to know. <laughs> it's just right now there's with everything going on in Israel, everything going on with Ukraine, everything going on domestically, everything just, it feels like there's just so much, so many reasons not to be optimistic. And so we're going to talk about optimism today and what that means and how you can have it and what difference it can make in your life. Uh, it's something you actively have to work towards. Uh, I think some people, maybe maybe it's a little bit easier than others, uh, but it can. science has proven that it can prolong your life. So let's, let's go ahead and, and dive in and talk a little bit more about it. All right, let's do it. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm back. Most valuable commodity I know of is information. And that, my friends, is called integrity. That's called courage. Now that's the stuff leaders should be made of. Either you're somebody or you're nobody. You're not the devil. You're practice. Uh, whenever you said in the intro, uh, you said, what a day to be alive. It reminded me of the, um, the guys in, uh, Mad Max, the one with Tom Hardy where yeah. they're like the, what do they call them? The Chrome boys or something or the uh, Wonder boys or, and I don't know. They like paint that like Chrome stuff on yeah. their mouth. It's like, get some high. And he's like, what Witness, a day, what a day. Witness me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like this blind following this blind optimism, <laughs> you know, like going off to battle to like potentially to their death, you yeah. know, into the falls um, of Valhalla. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know if that's the optimism we're going to be talking about today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, but I wholeheartedly believe that optimism should be a part of anyone's creed. Um, I, I think that it has such an impact just personally as well as uh, an impact on those around you. Um, have you ever just been next to someone or talking with someone or even just in their presence where they're just like freaking negative all the time? just pessimistic all the time well this is bad and that's wrong and this is that and this is that it's just like dude you are freaking dragging me down man yeah yeah um i mean it's okay it's okay to complain sometimes about things like i'm not saying that and i think sometimes people can be obnoxiously optimistic yeah say that say that five times <laughs> fast um and so that's something definitely need to watch out for as well but i think optimism and having a, a good attitude can definitely uh play uh, 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 a big part in your life and how it progresses, how your, your gen general, general happiness in your life. And I think we, we, we kind of talked about this in an episode, I don't know, maybe a hundred episodes ago. Uh, I think we talked about optimism versus pessim pessimism, maybe. Um, I think one of the things that, that we talked about was um, uh, I think I talked about it, prisoners of war. Mm -hmm. And they were saying that some of the, the people that had that that did the best as prisoners of war in Vietnam and different things like that were the people that were optimistic that they, you know, woke up every day saying, you know, we're going to we're going to get rescued. We're going to get rescued. We're going to get rescued. And well, they didn't just completely lose that. I think I think I remember, I remember what you said. It was actually like cautiously optimistic, like they had a hope for the future, but they weren't like overly optimistic because then when they didn't get rescued the next day they're like oh there's nothing you know yeah it, so it was, was like, like people, optimism with with oh, some breaks. realism yeah so it was like a little bit of mixture of both uh, but definitely not pessimism you know just like oh well might yeah. as well just give up now and i'll just die yeah you know? it's like oh we'll get rescued maybe it'll be today maybe it won't 
right? But it'll happen sometime. Yeah. Right? It'll happen sometime. And so, and for some of those guys, man, it was years later. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, I don't know. What, what do you think, Jared, about just yeah. generally about optimism? I think that uh, optimism is kind of one of those things where stuff happens in life and it's all how you take it uh, that matters. Uh, there's a little of a, a story or a parable uh, that I want to read. So there was a farmer and his horse ran away. His neighbor comes over and says, hey, man, he starts commiserating with him, commiserating with him. Um, he says on, on his loss. But the farmer says, you know, who knows what's good or bad. Uh, and this proved to be true. And the horse returned the next day, bringing with it a group of wild horses. Uh, and it, that it had befriended, befriended, befriended. Uh, the neighbor reappeared and congratulated the farmer and said, hey, this is an awesome windfall, uh, only to hear the same reply. Who knows what's good or bad? The farmer was right again, uh, as the next day his son tried to mount one of the wild horses and fell and broke his leg. Again, his neighbor commiserated with him, only to hear a third time, who knows what's good or bad? And the fourth time, the farmer's wisdom prevailed. The following day, the soldiers came by, uh, commandeering young men for the army, but the son was exempted because of his injury. So this ancient tale kind of illustrates the important fact that much of life consists not in what happens to us, but in how we respond to what happens to us. Whether we choose to be pessimists or optimists, we find that we are usually right. Um, I like this. Uh, there's a saying within Stoicism uh, there's kind of two that go oftentimes together is uh, memento mori, which is, you know, a, a memento of death or remember you're going to die, so to say. And that's just a, a reminder to live fully. But then there's another one that's amor fati, and that's the love of fate or, or love your fate. So the things that come at you, see them as simply the challenges that come at you in life. See them as as part of this life experience and something that is to be experienced and something that is maybe neither neither good nor bad, but just something that needs to be uh, worked through and as, an, as, a, as a unique experience that you have in your life. And as you do that, you know, optimism is part of that uh, and having a, 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 an optimistic perspective like, hey, you know, recently I've, I've had a lot of stuff. Kind of, kind of, we've had like, you know, things can kind of come in waves you know, we've got uh, our older son has has had an issue with his tooth that chipped this summer, uh, and he was eating some pretzels the other day at work uh, at school, and it the huge chip they had got repaired came off. So he's going to the dentist, fixed it, and then later that evening the fix came off. So then we had to take him back to the dentist, and they had to do like a a crown on it. And then we during the same time we discovered that our other son has like some kind of genetic thing where his teeth just are really soft kind of, and he's got one really bad cavity that probably needs to be tooth needs to be extracted. Uh, and then he's got two other cavities that are kind of forming. Uh, and it's not cause he hasn't brushed his teeth. It's just because of like this enamel thing. And so it's kind of like, man, like, so we've got all the kids going to the dentist and then, and then the microwave just stops working. And so got to buy a new microwave. And so it's just like, sometimes these things come I mean, I know th- and it's kind of like I'm trying to – these are all kind of very small things. I realize that in, in the context of life. But there's just a lot of little things that are coming at us. And uh, the way that I'm trying to really view these things is is thankful and it, with like a thankful um, mindset. You know, I'm thankful that I have I, I have the means and I have insurance for these kids. I have the means to buy a new microwave for 200 bucks. I have the means to take these kids uh, and get them, them fixed and get their teeth fixed and that there's a dentist, someone who knows has these skills locally because our one son, his jaw has been hurting because his tooth is basically cracked. And so we have someone who can come in and help him. And so really trying to view these challenges as, uh, I admitted these, these are small challenges, uh, but just, first world problems, but just, still hey, problems. Bring, hey, people in the third world still have teeth problems. That is true. <laughs> they might not have microwave problems, <laughs> but, uh, definitely just trying to take these things as they come and, 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 uh, it's important, I think, to train up on small issues like this as they come up. That way, when bigger things come up, you can you're already kind of in that mindset of just taking it as it comes and and doing the best with it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, look at it as a learning experience and a 
and an experience to grow for sure. The, uh, the story that I thought of when, when I was thinking about optimism was, uh, a story of survival, um, where staying optimistic and really a time of complete and utter despair, I would say being able to stay optimistic and, and, and make some crucial decisions can save your life. So this is the story of Aaron Ralston. So Aaron Ralston was a, he was a outdoorsman, avid outdoorsman. He was an engineer and he was kind of known for just going on these, these hikes out in the mountains um, by himself. He would go out for, you know, kind of these speed hikes for a day or so. And um, he would uh, just kind of do all kinds of crazy stuff. So he was actually doing a, a solo canyoneering trip in 2003 in the blue John Canyon in Utah. And as he was kind of scaling this, this uh, crevice crevasse, uh, a big boulder dislodged and it actually trapped his right arm against the canyon wall. And so this boulder came loose and, and kind of fell down and his hand was there and it pinched his hand against the wall. I always thought that was his whole arm, his whole right arm from the, well, elk, from the forearm pinched, yeah, down. Let's see, it trapped his arm. Yeah, his whole arm and his forearm from, down to the elbow. Yeah, yeah. Um, against the canyon wall. So he's stranded and completely alone. Nobody knew exactly where he was. I mean, he was in a pretty dire situation. He, the, there's actually a movie that's based off of this um, called 127 Hours is how long he was pinned there. Uh, and uh, spoiler alert, he survived. Okay. Uh, so he he actually did a bunch of interviews afterwards. And and I'll tell you a little bit more about how he survived. But one of the things that, that he talked about was um, just optimism in general and not losing hope in a time of just complete despair. So he really demonstrated some incredible optimism, resourcefulness, and really just a determination and a will to survive. So he was actually trapped for six days. And during this six days, he kind of rationed the limited uh, water and food that he had. He had a, a video camera with him. And so he would did periodic uh, videos of himself, kind of a video diary each day, uh, leaving messages for his family and other loved ones, pretty much, you know, saying goodbye to a certain extent. And he actually, he at first said he attempted to amputate his trapped arm using a dull multi-tool. So first he attempted to do it, but he, he, he wasn't able to with how he was doing it. So, on the sixth day, he was just extremely dehydrated. He was uh, just kind of his situation was getting more desperate and more desperate. And he made the decision to completely self-amputate his arm just below uh, the elbow to free himself. So he had this little cheap multi-tool and he cut his arm off that was trapped. And... He then summoned the strength to rappel down a 65 foot wall and then hike out of the canyon after he um, amputated his own arm. So a couple things here that come into play. I mean, I, I believe that optimism really play and having optimistic mindset played a vital role in his survival. Um, and I, I believe that, but he said that despite the extreme circumstances and, and really kind of the, the, the hopelessness that anyone would feel in that situation, his determination and positive outlook of resourcefulness, right? How can I get out of the situation? I, I know a lot of stuff. How can I figure it out? You know, he's, I'm sure he'd probably tried to, he was an engineer, so I'm pretty probably tried to leverage something or, you know, tried to get this boulder to move or whatever else. Um, but he said a couple of things. He said, maintaining hope, he he spoke about never giving up during the six days uh, that he spent trapped. He never was just like, well, I might as well just die. 
right? That was never really a, um, a factor to him. It was just like, how am I going to get out of this situation? So he maintained hope, resourcefulness and determination. Having an optimistic view allowed his mind to be a little bit more clear so that he could see what he needed to do. And then really just focusing on the positive. He emphasized the importance of focusing on the things that he could control in a positive aspect of a situation and less about things that he couldn't control. Um, So I think that is so comparable to things in our life. Um, I can't even imagine being in that type of situation. And I hope that I would survive. Right. I guess, I guess you really don't know until you're put in a situation like that. Yeah. But I, 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 know that like you said Jared I I like purposefully being being conscious consciously optimistic for the small things will kind of train your mind to when the big things come you can you're you're used to it you're used to saying okay well I mean this is this hurts or this is hard or but you know, I'll get through this. I'll get through this like I get through everything else. Yeah, and and just being optimistic. So, I, I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, that is that's a cool story, really cool story. Uh, I think that part of optimism, and I have one little extra little blurb to, to share. Uh, but I think that something that can just drag your optimism down to the ground is what are you ingesting. What are you uh, feeding your brain? What are you feeding into your mind? If you're always consuming uh, the news or or bad bad news or doomsday stuff, then it's just like man. Like I, for a long time, I, I was I yeah you know, I listened to people like like Glenn Beck or uh, some of these other uh, you know folks, but I feel like every single time I've ever listened to Glenn Beck, it's always doomsday oh this is the end of the american society as we know it. he's been saying that for literally 20 years yeah and well a lot of the stuff he says comes true to one extent or another but it's 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 hard to listen to and, and stay positive so if, I, if i'm always thinking that we are teetering on the edge of absolute anarchy and, and it's just like i'm gonna be like i'm gonna live as if i think covid has really affected a lot of people in that way a lot of people are disenfranchised with COVID and it's just like everything. And so, and there, there's a lot of negative energy coming from all these bad news and stuff. So it's just like, if you feel like there's no future ahead of you, then why do anything? You know, it's like, I saw a, a, the meme once and it was like, what our grandparents thought the future would look like. And it's like these bright shining sh- cities with flying cars and all this cool stuff. And it's like what our generation thinks the future looks like. And it's like this zombie apocalypse with like, everything is nuked and everything's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like, that is a reflection of like what we're feeding our minds. Like, do we, are we optimistic for the future or not? Um, and, and maybe this is a good segue into the story that I had. This is kind of a, an old parable. Uh, there was a sultan of Persia, uh, and he had sentenced two men to death. And one of the men, knowing how much the sultan liked his stallion, he offered to teach the horse to fly within a year if the sultan would spare him his life. The sultan fancied himself as the rider of the only flying horse in the world, so he agreed. You're mad, said the other prisoner. You know that the horses can't fly. You're only put, putting off the inevitable. He said, "Not." the prisoner said, not so. I have four chances of escaping my sentence. First, the sultan might die. Second, I might die. Thirdly, the horse might die. And fourth, I might teach the horse to fly. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I like... Even even in the face of a certain death, he's like, you know what? I've got options. You know, I I still have some options here. So I like the optimism, even in the face of you know certain death or doom or what have you, that uh, we we can still be optimistic uh, in that. So I, I I believe that optimism is an important part of every person's creed, as as well as a balance of optimism and realism, uh, is a critical. Uh, 
combination to have. Studies have shown that people who are optimistic uh, live longer, they're healthier. And so I, I encourage you to add this to your own creed. And as you do that, you will notice your stress levels will reduce. You can better manage the trials that come your way. And you will be able to uh, be a better influence on those around you. Uh, and people will be attracted to your optimism and to your, there's like this positive energy that you have. Someone the other day at work said, said to me uh, something that I felt was very flattering that I'm sure they didn't even know, but they said, whenever I talk to you, I just feel like really at ease. Uh, and they said like, I just feel like they just uh, get something like that. They get like, I gave them a like chill vibe or everything was going to be taken care of and they didn't have to worry. Uh, and so they were like, oh, whenever I talk to you, you're just so, you just have such a, a good attitude and a good vibe. And I'm like, yes, like that's, that's the brand that I want to have. Uh, that's, that's aligns, that's the authentic me that aligns with my attributes. I want to be that person. So to yeah. hear someone reflect that was, was, was really cool. Uh, and you know, I, I think it's important to make comments like that to other people. Sometimes it's good to you know, it meant that comment meant a lot to me. She probably the person that said that uh, I, th- I think it was a gal that I work with. She probably doesn't know that it did, uh, but it did. And so, anyway, I think I optimism's like it. great. And thank you all for listening to this episode. And let's add it to your personal creed and let's build our creeds together. All right, let's do it. <laughs>